This is Tom Watson reporting Mike Watt and the Missing Men Hyphenated Man Tour 2011. It begins in the morning in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we wake up at Mike's place and we all gather our senses, eat some food that he made um, very graciously, and before long we get in the van and head out. Um, they had tulips in the front yard, and that's something I remembered. We, we tiptoed around the tulips before we left. So, anyhow, we, uh, we're we heading towards St. Louis, and um, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's an interesting drive. We go through Indiana and head through, well, to the river, to St. Louis, and see the big arch, and uh, it's kind of an amazing thing so we talk about it in the van and um, we're playing at a place called Blueberry Hill um, which I've played with Mike before and Raul has played with Mike before but this is the first time we've played together there and actually I played with the Red Crayola there once actually we're down in downstairs uh, the name of the restaurant is Blueberry Hill but the name of the live room downstairs is the Duck Room and that's because of the Chuck Berry Obviously, the Chuck Berry thing. Um, he's a he's a local and plays there. I hear he plays once a week or something like that. Whenever he's up for it, um, that would be amazing to see. Um, anyhow, we get to Duck Room and load in, and uh, the Blueberry Hill is is a place that uh, has tons of paraphernalia and like um, all kinds of like knickknacks and whatever you call it that the, the, from, I, I can't even begin to tell you but there are hundreds of photographs of the owner with different talents that have come through and played and so it's there's a lot of distractions and things to look at um yeah so we uh we get downstairs and load our stuff in and it's a nice room to play in and um uh tonight we play with a group called tone rodent and uh they were good um kind of um i, I hate to even try to describe them because it, it's confounding in a way but some of it reminded me a little of uh early 80s uh post-punk new waves um uh, not so far from Gary Newman or Two Boy Army and maybe a little Joy Division and something kind of dark. They had keyboards and a girl who played tambourine and they were kind of droney, a little bit kraut rocky and weird. And the keyboard player hit some notes that were pretty intense. And um, I see a friend of mine, T. Kelly Mason, a guy from Los Angeles, an artist who's uh, teaching in uh st louis and so he's there part of the week of the each week and uh it's great to see him and i'm glad he got in because i kind of spaced out on the guest list and uh but he got in by showing his iphone with our correspondence and so anything anyway it worked out good um i think we play pretty good that night and uh um we load out and um yeah, I'm trying to remember. The loadout was, uh, we have to go up an elevator, and at night it's kind of complicated, but we finally pack out, and uh, this guy, Marty, had, uh, here's a little twist, is that this fella, Marty, had um, in the past acquired Mike's flannel from the Second Men Tour, uh, the Second Men's Middle Stand, the Second Opera's Tour shirt that he would wear, every night and somehow it was left at his place and um so marty brought it back to the show so mike hadn't seen it in seven years or something like that so uh one thing leads to another and we end up staying at marty's house with his wife holly and by the time we get to their pad it's um you know it's got to be one or something maybe a little later and there's a, a huge wafting bacon smell coming from the kitchen and and Holly's in there making six pounds of bacon or something for the panini sandwiches that they're planning to help us with or uh, for us to eat. Um, 
there are some animals in the house, which is great, but there's one in particular that kind of freaked me out, which was this little black cat. They said, oh, all the animals are sweet, but don't pet the black cat. And um, it's true, that little black cat is uh, unpredictable. Like, uh, yeah, it's just uh, something's, there's a little wire that shorted out in the brain. or I don't know what happened, but uh, I, it, it scares me. And uh, um, I have a hard time falling asleep because I think I have this paranoid feeling that it's going to attack me while I'm sleeping. So, anyhow, uh, I actually do get to sleep, and I survived the night, and no cuts or anything um, that I know of. And uh, we get up, and we head out again, yet again. This happens every day. Um, this time, we're going to Chicago, and Chicago is a town that has a lot of personal history. I have a lot of people, acquaintances there that I try to stay in touch with, but often I don't see for one reason or, not, or another, so I, I hesitate from calling anyone. Uh, Doug, Doug McCombs is a good friend. He plays in Tortoise and 11th Dream Day, and unfortunately he's out of town playing a gig, and that's sad because it would have been great to see his face there and talk to him. And uh, But all of his bandmates from Tortoise, or 11th Dream Day for that matter, um, or Brokeback, would have been nice to see. Um, I did text John McIntyre, another friend there who happened to be out of the country, um, enjoying it, time off, which it was nice that he responded just saying, I'm not there. Um, uh, so I didn't see any familiar faces, really, except for the couple, Tom and Jen, who Raul and I met through uh, Lou Barlow when we toured a while back um, and stayed with and and Tom's an old friend of theirs and uh, a good friend of Kathleen and and Lou's and uh, and a big supporter of Sebado and Lou and all that and a super sweet they're both super great people and uh, so I, I was a little hesitant to ask them to, if we could stay merely because I think they're so great and I didn't want to impose our wrath upon them but uh, it, it turned out to be a, a great evening because we had them to hang out with, and we got, and and also a, a nice, uh, nice to find out that they're getting married, and um, and everything's wonderful there. Um, oh yeah, in Chicago. I also met Patrick and John of Wilco, the band Wilco, and my friend Nels plays guitar with them, or our friend, I should say, Nels plays guitar with them now. But I don't know any of the people band so it was really nice to meet a couple of the people and it's nice that they came to the show so thank you patrick and john if you're listening to this or if anyone else who knows them is listening to this you can tell them thank you for me um they seem like really great people um and they were very complimentary uh i'm saying a lot because i'm looking at a piece of paper and trying to see where i'm going um so Yes, the morning in Chicago, we uh, uh, we make a couple trips. We go to Target and we go to Walgreens and do all kinds of exciting things like find, find a couple bags and uh, things that Bob needed for merchandise and whatnot, bags to put bags in. Um, but after a little while, we head out again, and this time we're going to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And playing the Shank Hall, and uh, it's not that far of a drive, but the weather is pretty cold, so it's it delays. It just takes feels like a long drive for some reason. By the time we get to Milwaukee, we pull up in front. There's like a, a little a demonstration going on in front of a clinic there of uh, you know pro life. Pro life is such a pleasant way of saying like people who want to make people who are in uncomfortable situations even more uncomfortable um somehow it just i don't know everybody to each his own i guess but it's really uh, I, I it's it, it's uncomfortable for me so anyway finally they the pack of sign bearing uh, uh cr criticizers <laughs> for lack of a better word 
uh, depart and uh, but the snow starts to fall in in front of the shank hall in Milwaukee and it's really really cold I mean I said it was cold before but it's really cold now and um, Raul's sitting in the room with me right now so if you hear any you know incidental noises that's Raul um, thanks Raul by the way Welcome. it's nice to have you here um, yeah so shank hall is a trippy place spinal tap that history they played there many many people have played in this room and it's it's a trippy place because it's almost like a, like a talent show stage or a high school I don't know it's hard to really describe what it is uh, like folding chairs and a and it seems like there should be a curtain in front of the band you know before we play it's, it's kind of an unusual kind of a gig but um, uh, Jim well, sound man Shank Hall John, God, he was good though. He was good. Damn it! Sorry, I don't remember the name. Very, very good guy. Did the, did a great job helping us out with everything. Um, and um, we ordered some pizza. And uh, I recall the last time I ordered pizza in Milwa Milwaukee, it came cut in a grid rather than pizza slices, which freaked me out. And we got the pizza, and it was yet again cut in grid rather than pizza slice. So I really don't understand how that originated. Maybe someone can help me with that someday, because uh, it, it's it's not really a fair way to do it. Somehow it doesn't. And it's not easy to eat that way either. So uh, it seems unusual. Um, anyhow, the Madison gig is okay. I I I, I don't know. I get distracted by some of the crazy freak out dra dancing in front there's some there's had been some alcohol consumed and some of the people were going a little off and uh which is fine but it, sometimes it's distracting too so i don't know i got distracted that night i recall we played with this group called couch flambeau and i guess they've been together for 25 years or 29 years um and uh kind of a local local seen like experience and a lot of people seem to like them a lot and they're very nice people and their music's also kind of confounding um so i won't even go into it but from there we uh we stay with a really sweet lady named dina and she invited uh because i'm in charge of I mean, i've said before i'm in, usually in charge of making the call of where if we need to find a place to stay i suss it out because i can pack up quickest and check out who's offering and kind of see what the pros and cons might be of each opportunity um in this case dina said that she was she lived in a place called saint francis which is uh, among other things it's uh, a place where the convent is and uh also which also that it seems kind of safe if there's a convent there uh and she said she said she had underground parking that she thinks the van will fit so those two things put together sound great. We go with her. Um, I also I receive a book from uh, this person named Adam Krauss who wrote a book um, entitled Art and Politics, I believe, and I'm am reading it at the moment. And uh, I, and he reminded me of a conversation we had we had had about ten years ago or eight years ago about John Cage and et cetera and so forth. They're, I don't really remember all of it, but it's great that the book is, is published and out, and he gave me one, and it's fantastic. And thank you very much, Adam. Um, so we go to Dina's, and uh, Raul and I get to sleep in Dina's bed. And Dina sleeps on the floor, and it was like, she's man, she's got, she's got a killer bed. Let me put it that way. For anyone who's looking for really good sleep, um, I'm not sure what kind of mattress it was. Might have been a Sealy or um, Simmons. I'm not really sure, but it was a good one, a high quality mattress, a very good sleep. And uh, she fed, feeds us in the, in the evening and then again in the morning. And um, before long, we have to move on to Madison. And Madison, um, we're playing a place I'd never played before called the High Noon Saloon because uh, years ago, a club called OK's Corral burnt down and it was the place that we would always play with Mike and a cute, a really cool little, just a great vibe, little storefront converted punk rock club. Um, 
but uh, even though the, the high noon saloon is a bit more sterile uh, or industrial prefabby they st they had the uh, Indian head wooden Indian head uh, on a pedestal up on above one of the doors which was the one thing that I recall thinking like oh damn that Indian head got burnt and so they did save the Indian head among other certain items of that they had there, a saddle and certain other things, but so glad that Indian head's still around. Um, we get there early enough so Raul and I could go for a walk up towards the Capitol building and get some coffee and stretch our legs and talk and uh, make some phone calls to our significant others, etc. And um, we get back and load in and pack up, or not pack up, load in, sound check, do our gig. We're playing with a group called Hum Machine uh, that we'd played with before. Very nice folks. Um, and the guitarist, whom I'm spacing on his name, lends me his power adapter for my pedals because mine, for some reason, decides not to work anymore. And uh, that was a super gracious act. And I really, really appreciate that. And uh, actually, at the end of the evening, I offer some money and he. he Let's me have it. So uh, that saved saved my ass. Um, it was fun. It was a good gig. I liked it. Uh, we met some nice people there, but it was it was pretty much you know like business as usual. Um, from there, we go to Jop and Kelly's place. Kelly, I believe, is uh, at the, well. I think that's her. Kelly. Kelly, is that your name? I don't know. I'm pretty sure. She is one of the bartenders there, and her husband, Jop, uh, and she have a place with their daughter, Phoebe, that we go to to stay. And uh, their buddy, Adam, who'd been there from the minute we rolled up, drinking uh, I'm Jameson straight up on rock, on the rock. So I, I'm glad he had somewhere to crash that night because he probably had some alcohol. He had a lot of alcohol in his system. Um, anyhow, um Raul and I share a bedroom, the bed, and uh, people stay up doing what people do, And uh, but I, I call Caroline and go to sleep. Um, next morning, we head towards St. Paul, and uh, St. Paul and, Milwaukee, and Minneapolis are two big towns with a lot of music and a lot of competition and a lot of gigs, and, and uh, it's just great to play the turf club after, because I haven't played there in so long. Usually it's the first or seventh street egg entry and somehow turf club just has a cool vibe because it's more suburban. It's still in the urban area, but it's, it's not as downtown. It's not downtown Minneapolis. It's this more, uh, uh, slightly less urban St. Paul and more like a, um, like a local bar, but an amazing place, an old, old bar. And I, I, with uh, Joshua about he's the man there who lets us in work in the bar who's there all the time apparently but he gives me the lowdown on the history of the bar and that was nice uh, it's always nice to learn about the history of these places and there's a lot of history because I guess there used to be a, a an actual horse track nearby and this was the bar that people would do their drinking in and uh, it was a beautiful old place and uh, converted into a punk rock not punk rock but like a, a live space a live club that uh, has good character and really great people um, and uh, I bought some new casters for my cabinet at the surplus store down the street and um, uh, the band that we play with is called Stunning and it's spelled, spelled S-T-N-N-N-G wait yeah, something like that. Without the vowels, I believe. It's just S T N N I S T N N G maybe. Anyway, great band, fantastic band. Um, but before they play, I ask one of the guys in the group. You know, I just mentioned. You know, we're looking for a place to stay. If you know anything, let us know. We appreciate it. And Chris, who turned out to be the singer of the group, offers his place, and it turns out to be the perfect situation. So, thanks, Chris. And Holly, your his wife. Um, uh, but the band Stunning is is literally stunning, and they're just a great 
I don't, I'm not going to go into trying to describe it, but check it out if you can. I, in other words, I demanded some of their music to take home with me, and uh, they were really fun to play. It was also nice that there were just two groups, just two bands playing. Um, um, our gig goes good too. I feel like we play well. Um, I'm trying to think of other oh other points of interest. Uh, we we see Grant Hart, who is a local uh, St. Paul dude. Who, well, of Husker Du fame, but definitely of his own, on his own, you know, uh, he's done his own, he has carved his niche in his own right and uh, still plays a lot of music and is a great person to bump into, a fountainhead of information and an uh, interesting person um, in every way. Um, and his uh, friends are also very nice. We uh, also bump into Steve, Steve McClellan, who used to be the man we would uh, play for or through or promote the gigs at 7th Street Entry. And uh, Mike has known him for centuries, I guess, and uh, I've known him for at least a decade and a half, maybe, or a decade, let's say. Um, so it's nice to see his face again and talk. Very sweet guy. And he helps us load out at the end of the night, which I thought was very kind and uh, endearing, and um, but after then we we head over to Chris and Holly's place. Chris, the singer from Stunning, and Holly, his wife, who happened to be going to a different show at First Avenue Avenue, I believe. Um, and um, <clears throat> Raul and I then uh, also find a little room of our own, so we're taken care of. And uh, I think I go right to bed. That's all I remember. I think I put my mouth guard in or two garden and put my eye patch on and the little dog crawls in bed with R Raul and I and um, I had a drink before I went that's right I had one drink Raul's telling me about it a dr that's right Raul reminded me that I did have one whiskey before I went to sleep which was nice thanks Raul um, he's always good for that kind of information okay so in the morning we we dawdle a little bit because uh, it turns out that Mike has to fly to Ann Arbor to do a gig with the Stooges and we had a show canceled because of that and so we're driving mike all the way to Lawrence, Kansas instead of going to Omaha. Um, but it was so nice of Chris to take Mike to the airport because we could have, get a couple more hours of sleep and get ready for our big drive. Um, so we had this, we have this intense drive towards Lawrence all the way through Iowa and and there's this enormous snowstorm, and coming from California, at least where we're from, Southern California, on the coast, we don't we don't get snowstorms, so we're not used to driving in that kind of weather. And uh, and it turned out a couple of days prior to that, to the, a couple of days before then, Chris flipped his van with his bandmates, and or he um, he didn't flip it, but the van flipped over in a snow situation or an icy situation, so we're super paranoid driving also without Mike and uh, just Mike it's just Raul me Peak, and Bob in the van and we take our time all the way through Iowa till it just starts to we, we consider even stopping because it's that that point where we're not sure if it's safe or not but we get beyond that point and we keep rolling and uh, we get before long we get to uh, to Lawrence Kansas and um, luckily enough, we have a place to, to stay with that day off since Mike's not with us. Um, with Kevin Kelly, um, Kevin Kelly's a guy that Mike has stayed with since Firehose. He's man, Kevin's seen the Minutemen. So I mean, there's there's uh, you know, it's almost uh, it falls in the family category, I guess you'd say. You know, like uh, in I stayed there a couple of times before, and he's super great and but a lot has changed for him since i've seen him last he got married he's had two children one that just was born a month ago or so or something or recently maybe a couple of months um his wife sarah his little boy caden and now the new fresh little girl caitlin um so we get there you know it, it was like a nine hour journey because we took our time and uh but Kevin's got like ham, potatoes, fresh asparagus, 
beer, just a, you know, good company, a comfortable, warm home, and uh, we each get a place to sleep, and it, it was like, there's no way, it's just, it, there's no hotel that would have been better than that, so I don't know if, I hope, Kevin, if you hear this, we really appreciate it, we love you, all of you, meaning the whole family, and all of you, meaning you. Um, anyhow, having said that, I, uh, fall asleep, and, um, we wake up, I wake up pretty early, I recall, and, uh, um, I take a bath before anyone gets up, just because there's a bath there, and I saw the chance, and I took it, um, and Kevin's already making breakfast, and <laughs> it's kind of amazing, and, uh, Mike is is uh, going to be rolling into town a little later in the afternoon. So we just kind of chill out all day. And and um, I don't know, I, I put new casters on my cabinet. And um, we watch some television or a documentary on the Foo Fighters that has some of Mike Watt in it. So that's why we watched it. And uh, Raul and I play some uh, Wii, which is like a video game thing. But archery and um that's all i play is the archery but there's also all kinds of other stuff ping pong and you probably know all about that and i don't but, um anyhow so we Raul and i head over to the bottleneck at about five o'clock and load the gear and i played the bottleneck several times i think this is raul's first time at the bottleneck second time okay anyway he's been there before but i've been there a few times and it's it's a cool place nice room um we set things up, and luckily Mike comes rolling up right about the right time. We do our sound check, and we meet up with a f the friend who drove Mike from the airport, George. Uh, a super nice dude that, man, that was just worked out great to get a, get him picked up at the airport and brought to the club because it really helped us out um, time-wise and effort-wise. Um, and then he buys us dinner on top of that, so that was great. Um, yeah, so... Uh, also, interestingly, we're playing at the Bottleneck with a group called Brannock Device, who are from Kansas City, or live in Kansas City, and uh, I, I've played with them twice, at least, with Mike at the Bottleneck, so it's cool to see them again. And then double cool is to see that uh, uh, Troy, Meese, Meese or Mice, Tree, just Troy, is, is opening the set with uh, doing a solo guitar thing, singing thing, and... Um, I, I met him through the Meat Puppets and the Phoenix uh, scene crew of people and um, and sweetheart, and good guy, and it's really nice to see him again. And totally surprised. Um, also, uh, a fun night because I like the stage there. Um, it's in a corner and it's really wide, and somehow the room just feels good to me. Um, and uh, other interesting points to note out. Oh, Mike, uh, I I got some seat, some old overpass. Oh, I say old overpass CDs sent from Steve Shelley uh, this day or the day that that arrived that day, so I could sell some of my old records uh, along with uh, the other merchandise, and that's new. Um, that worked out pretty good, and I don't know why I didn't bring some along with me, but at least they're with us now. Um, anyhow, so the show is fun and we pack up and get out the door and I'm forgetting so many really important parts, but I'm also trying to make this short enough so that people might listen to it. And, um, at this point we head back to Kevin's and I don't think I stay up very late because I'm kind of drawing a blank and this was not very long ago, but... Uh, I'll just have to say that I went to bed in the Dr. Seuss room, which is, uh, I believe it might have been Caden's room. Might, maybe it's Caitlin's room. I'm not really sure whose room it is, but it has all Dr. Seuss motif going on and a lot of the books and toys, etc. And um, I talked to Caroline and go to bed. And that's it.